Hey Dan, the practitioner here, and hoping these won't be my last words. Just kidding, of course. Um, I thought I'd help uh, elaborate a few things uh, a bit. Um, if you're looking for uh, the talk, there actually is uh, theoretical models. Um, in particular, they're testing uh, some extrapolations of string theory in relation to higher order dimensions. And they are expecting that, one, um, according to one of these models, that uh, a black hole, or more correctly, a series of black holes, actually will be formed. Very small. And the reason they're postulating this is because of the fact that the... Um, what they're trying to show is that our universe is in fact not four-dimensional as we uh, regularly perceive it, three spatial dimensions and, the and time, but there might actually be higher order dimensions through which gravity is permeating, i.e. Uh, that you know gravity is, is reaching into these higher order dimensions. And if these particles accelerated really fast, collapsed in on it, you know, uh, you know um, compressed at high enough speed, um, gravitons, the so-called carrier particle, the theoretical carrier particle for gravity, would actually come out of higher order dimensions, courtesy of this speed, create a simulated mass, and create this collapsing black hole. Uh, there's a book I happen to have at present, which I'm actually about, um, which I'm actually on my way through reading right now, which I would recommend. This is a, um, this is one of the, uh, the big, the best popular uh, pieces which is talking about this. Um, it's a little outdated, it's 2005, but it basically gives the, uh, um, the overall uh, gist of what we're dealing with here is called Warped Passages Unraveling the Mysteries of the Universe's Hidden Dimensions by Lisa Randall. Uh, Lisa Randall is a physics professor from Harvard University. Uh, she um, works on models and uh, empirical evidence uh, in conjunction with string theory uh, to determine um, uh, what the um, you know what the L, uh, the, very, the various theories that uh, L, the LHC was supposed to prove, and she herself was actually one of the prominent people who determined that the reason why gravity in our universe is weaker than the electromagnetic force is because it actually leaks in from another universe, um, uh, another membrane, I believe was the term they was she, was the term she used in here, uh, and that basically um, gravity seeps from membrane to membrane, like it's a uh, uh, gravity permeates out amongst all uh, higher order dimensions, and that we get some weakening um, aspect down here. So the high particle levels should actually be creating very small black holes. Now, interestingly enough, these black holes are actually, as you said, harmless. Um, they're so damn small, their gravitational, fo uh, their gravitational force is not able to be um, uh, dealt with. Now, interestingly, um, when Stephen Hawking talked about uh, black holes evaporating over time, they're actually, um, that evaporation is actually how they're going to determine whether or not a black hole was formed. See, one of the things about, and this is not talked about in this book, but in a few other physics textbooks and in popular magazines, one of the things which um, is interesting about black holes is that the way that black holes evaporate is that when they absorb matter in, they emit something afterwards, uh, you know, after the matter's been compressed and, you know, entropy's been absorbed in the surface area, they do emit a certain amount of heat called, in the form of what's called Hawking radiation. Now this is a particular. Um, this is a particular. Um, it's the only way they can actually actively detect black holes, um, uh, uh, besides gravitational distortions in a particular area. Now what's interesting about this is the fact that the um, the evaporation rate is actually proportional to the size of the black hole. Um, basically, and, and, and it evaporates in the form of Hawking radiation. So what you're expecting is, is that for a very, very large black hole, you know, ones which are several hundreds of uh, thousands of miles in diameter, uh, you know, light years in diameter, um, these large black holes will emit a small amount of Hawking radiation and could be expected to uh, evaporate over probably a few billion years. Now, the ones that they're creating in the LHC are very, very small and very minute. So what they're expecting is that, they're is that these black holes are actually going to emit a huge amount of Hawking radiation, you know, or, or, you know, proportionally bigger amounts of Hawking radiation than what you would expect from these, you know, you know, basically there's going to be a lot more Hawking radiation in a single burst. And the LHC, when they actually blow these particles, actually has Hawking radiation det detectors built in. If they find a, a, a huge amounts of Hawking radiation during the, during the collisions, then they'll know that these black holes were created and the higher order dimensions exist. Now, what's interesting is that I'm actually looking forward to the results of what the LHC comes out, especially considering that this actually may provide the basis for... Um, uh, now, I don't know whether you're skeptical about this, and I'd actually like your opinion on it, but um, I'm a skeptic myself, but I'm still positing a po uh, posting a positive theory. Um, this actually, uh, this uh, higher order dimensional capability for gravity to transcend, uh, you know, for gravity to exit uh, to higher order dimensions is actually pivotal towards the theory I'm working towards, uh, towards a positive theory, a uh, positive testable theory for the carrier mechanism for psychic phenomena. This includes ESP, uh, psychokinesis, um, uh, reincarnation, 
Um, you know, um, now, the, now I want to make something perfectly clear about this. And I'm, and again, this is the theory that is still being formulated. I have to get all the math worked out to actually figure out how this would actually work. But this is roughly the theory I'm working with, and this is what I indicated in my re telekinesis experiment part ten, which was a couple of videos back. Um, it's actually about three videos back, so you can find that. Just click TK in there, and you'll find my uh, late, you know, amongst my latest videos, and you'll find it there. Now, the bit which I'm dealing with is, is, is here's my theory for. ESP or te or telekinesis or anything like that to be carried, it would have to work along some sort of carrier force. We know that, uh, for what we know from within our universe, information is carried along radio waves, which are along the electromagnetic spectrum. You know, radio waves, light waves, electro you know electromagnetic waves. But interestingly, the electromagnetic force also has the force of magnetism, which is able to attract or repel depending on which pole uh, is dealing with. It also can generate electrical fields, which in turn can generate power. So, um, you know, we do seem to have something that can create an effect, which would imply that if ESP and psychokinesis did in fact exist, it would have to work on some sort of carrier particle or force. Here's my suspicion. In order to deal with the so-called timeless effects of ESP, i.e. precognition, you know, uh, information flowing backwards through time, and the apparent space-time independence of such things as clairvoyance tele and telepathy, and the fact that apparently micro-psychokinesis, and I'm talking random number generator studies, appear, note that I said appear, you know, the, and, I'm, and I'm talking the best controlled ones, do appear to be able to work space-time independent, i.e. the Global Consciousness Project, for example, you know, do appear to have some indicatory evidence of this, then there would only be one force uh, if this higher dimensional model does work, and if I've got the math, if I've got the understanding of this right, then there is only one force which should be able to do this, the gravitational force. The gravitational force, if it does in fact have a carrier particle known as a graviton, it does actually have a, uh, a, an effect that they are trying to measure right now out of cosmology known as a gravity wave. Now the thing is, if gravity waves could theoretically be sent or received by the human body, and if they could be focused through a higher order dimensional to uh, complex, then the gravitational force could be focused, uh, say, uh, high amounts of gravitons for micropsychokinesis, or, a, or the person's own gravitational field for very small uh, macro telekinesis, um, or could be manipulated in terms of amplitude or frequency of a gravitational wave to send information um, from one mind to another, or from one mind's, one mind's future self to one's own past self uh, by circumventing through a higher order dimension and treating time as a lower order dimension, thus completely circumventing it. So the signal would still travel at the speed of light, but it would be traveling, uh, it would be traveling at the speed of light, but, uh, but outside of time or at a very, very different time rate. So therefore, uh, time would have been circumvented and space, you know, and vis-a-vis -vis our uh, uh, line of re, uh, vis-a-vis -vis where we are st sitting, would appear to violate causality or appear to violate the speed of light. Now, of course, there are a couple of testable predictions which can come out of it, this. Number one of which is that if you uh, did a Gansfeld protocol and you did it right near one of these gravity wave detectors, you should be able to detect a, uh, in a given frequency range, you should be able to detect a unique amplitude or frequency or, or concentration of frequency of gravity waves, which can't be otherwise accounted for. Um, now, like I said, now, of course, it's going to require a lot more math and a lot more work. And I'd like your uh, thoughts on uh, how this works, regardless of uh, regardless of uh, psych uh, regardless of the uh, uh, the gravity wave theory, uh, whether the state of the evidence in terms of meta-analysis is sufficient to even warrant testing this theory or to even warrant uh, posting a positive theory for psychic phenomena. So I'd like your uh, response on that. I'd also like other people's responses on it. Um, I'd like to generate another full-scale debate on it. Um, I'm a skeptic myself. I'm a more of an open-minded skeptic than I probably would consider most of my fellow skeptics to be. Um, and in a future video, I will, I will post uh, the reasons for why, including a replication by skeptics of the Gansfeld. So, uh, under, under uh, meta-analysis uh, of their own. So, that's, uh, you know, again, that's one of the major reasons. But that's neither here nor there, and that's an entire video in its own right. So, um, and I think I've actually posted a large chunk of that info in other videos. But I'll do another recondensing uh, owing to this particular new, uh, um, what I'm hoping will be the findings from the LHC. Even if it turns out that my interpretation of string theory and stuff is wrong, and so therefore it, it wouldn't be a good, an effective model anyway, I'm still having to read the rest of this book just to make sure that I understand it right. Even if not, at least the, the idea of extra dimensions and parallel universes will be an interesting discovery in its own right. So... I'd like your own personal opinions as to whether or not you think psychic phenomena exist, and if so, why or why not, or the state of parapsychology as a science. Um, let's get the debate going. In a future video, I'll post more evidence in my theory in greater detail, and I hope you enjoy. By the way, I am a skeptic. I'm just posting a positive theory so the field can actually have something to test for once. Toodles!